There was once a bizarre crime that was committed in Japan on May 2019th. 21 year old Yuka Takauka was arrested for cold blooded assault against her supposed boyfriend at her Shinjuku residence. The incident gained massive exposure after a picture of the aftermath went viral. The photo shows Yuka being approached by officers while she was sitting in the lobby near her horribly wounded lover, soaked in his blood, casually smoking and talking on her mobile phone. There seems to be a lot of misinformation surrounding this story, so we'll look at the consistent details, which includes how Yuka was idolized by a dark ring of anime devotees who sanctified her as the real-life yandere. For some of you that may not know, Yandere's are known as a term in anime for a person who is shown as loving and caring to someone that they have strong feelings for, until it can become dangerous, physically or mentally, whether it's overprotectiveness, pure violence, or even worse. It's pretty obvious that this is very uncommon, given its bizarreness as well as the story for it. Yuka may have had a beautiful appearance, but her actions as well as her true intentions were that of a mentally disturbed individual who has committed a serious felony. And trust me on this, ladies and gentlemen, the last thing you ever want is a person who has the behavior of a yandere, because it could be a life ruining mess for you. Think of it as this. Think of it as a really bad ex-girlfriend or boyfriend that you have had who has mistreated you in a lot of ways and then multiply that times three. Let us continue into our latest article today, which is the story of Yuka and how it all came to this point. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and a subscribe, and I hope you enjoy this video. Shinjuku. It is a ward settled in Tokyo, Japan. It is also a commercial capital, housing the northern half of the most active railway section in the globe, Shinjuku Station, as well as the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. During the middle of May, Yuka Takauka had been employed as a manager for a so-called Girls Bar Hostess Club, located in the Kabukicho district of the Shinjuku Ward. Then, in the previous October, she met 20-year-old Phoenix Luna, who is a bar host at Fusion Nightclub in the same area. Hostess clubs are famous in the nightlife industry of East Asian countries. These establishments primarily hire female employees and provide to men seeking alcoholic beverages as well as thoughtful conversations. The late host clubs are alike, except the male staff tend to women. It was speculated that Luna was a particularly popular host in the city, his nightclub, and a lot of the female patrons he would see daily were familiar with him. Nevertheless, Takauka and Luna began to see one another, and numerous reports state they moved in together on May 20th. On May 23rd, Luna returned home late, even though Takauka was up all night, anticipating his return. Takauka had recalled Luna to be a bit callous towards her before the incident. On the same day, Takauka allegedly found a photo of him with another woman, possibly a mere patron. When Luna finally arrived, Takauka didn't mention the photography to him whatsoever. Instead, she waited for him to fall asleep and then began attacking his abdominal region with a kitchen knife. Awoken and horrified, he escaped to the first floor lobby. At the time, it was tremendously unclear who contacted emergency assistance at this point. It was only speculated that it could have been a resident, or it could have been Takauka who made the phone call. The Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department arrived at the scene and verified evidence of Takauka's personal journals with notes written in blood. They translate to, I like you, and I like you so much, I wanted to you. Detectives also discovered the knife used to stab Luna. Takauka stated, It was the one thing I put in order in preparing a new life with him, referring to the knife she's used. She also said, I didn't want to go anywhere, so I sat down at the outside staircase 
I did not call emergency services because I intended to after watching him. Numerous bystanders witnessed the blood drenched Takauka being escorted by Tokyo police from her apartment building and being taken into custody. As this captured moment spread throughout the global network, dozens of people were utterly fascinated by what occurred, unfortunately. As for the victim, Luna, he was transported to a hospital where he remained in critical condition. Little info emerged about the result of his recovery, and many people even suspected that he eventually succumbed to his wounds. Honestly, he was nearly forgotten. When explaining her motive, Takauka initially said to the investigators, Since I loved him so much, I just couldn't help it. Nevertheless, her views progressed into a far more profound and ominous meaning than previously stated. I was sad and seeking to and I thought how I'd like to go about it. I thought that I would him because I thought that was how I could be with him. I thought that expressions such as I like you and I would like to be with you would become a reality if we both You would think that such callous behavior would produce public revulsion. However, there's literally a community of online fans all invested with Japanese anime culture that possess a deep admiration with Yuka, who's the manifestation of a real-life yandere. More than a week passed before Yuka's name was discussed again, not in a sense concerning new developments of her crimes, but because of a donation intended for her. She was regarded as a psychopath. Some people sympathized with her, and her admirers wholeheartedly believed that she didn't need to be condemned for her actions, and she needed to be rehabilitated. The donation was targeting for $3,000. And surprisingly, after two days of it being posted, the amount of $3,840 was sent from 69 contributors. Obviously, this big-ass donation caused an immediate outcry. Because many others protested this donation, they strongly expressed their belief that such a large sum of money like this only condones her violent actions in the attempted murder of Luna. The attempt by donors in providing her exclusive privileges also sparked criticism because it was regarded as favoritism, and she was widely dubbed as the too beautiful attempted murder suspect by her orbiters. People felt that the contributors wouldn't precisely be singing the same damn tune if the suspect wasn't beautiful. And after receiving vast criticism, the website that allowed the donation was ultimately removed because it couldn't be opened no longer. Anime cosplay, and in general, otaku culture, would eventually become a topic of issue in the same form in how the American government tends to argue that violent video games are the cause of the various <laughs> and attacks that have occurred over the years. It can be contended that Yuka possessed a certain psychological predisposition for violent behavior, and the level of brutality exhibited in the anime shows she enjoyed watching. They might have inspired her to manifest her destructive tendencies in the most harmful manner. Some speculation surfaced that Luna was taken advantage of Yuka, and the documented information regarding this alleged occurrence was a comment made by a user on Facebook who seemed to be a sympathizer. But regardless, this was just a rumor. The official status of the victim was finally concluded on July 1st, when a Twitter user tweeted, Sorry, I'm alive and back. He then added, since I was stabbed in the liver, I cannot drink. It was Phoenix Luna, and his odds of surviving this ordeal was very small. Approximately a 20% chance, stated by doctors. But against all the odds, he recovered. He spent days at the hospital in critical condition, and some weeks healing from surgery. And to everyone's surprise, he was alive and mentally recovering. He also agreed to an interview with Shukan Post to share this horrifying experience from his point of view, and to clear up some rumors that circulated after the near-fatal stabbing occurred. 
The rumors included that he started living with Yuka, only days before the incident. He wasn't wearing anything when displayed in the picture either, and that he was attacked during intercourse after he received a telephone call from another patron. He then said, I live in a dormitory provided by the club, and I was invited by her to go to a cafe or to watch some movies. After that, she reserved me as her host, where I was the number one host for May. And from Luna's point of view, he said that he has made arrangements to help Yuka with organizing her apartment around noon. However, his responsibilities at work caused him to be late. He eventually appeared about three hours later, and he decided to bathe to relax, after which he fell asleep. After exiting the bath, he put on a pair of shorts. Luna stated the underwear was not visible when he collapsed in the entryway of the complex due to the angle from which the pictures were captured. The stabbing occurred when he finally got to his bed. He then said, After I got an uncomfortable feeling in my stomach, I looked and saw a knife protruding and a lot of blood. He said, Strangely, I felt no pain but I was shocked and frightened, so I shoved her from the bed and fled. She then chased me, and I thought I was dead. Takalka grabbed him after he rushed out of the front door, and he said, I shook loose and got on the elevator, and I also lost consciousness when I got to the lobby. I do not remember the rest. And then Yuka grabbed him after rushing out the door. He also verified a report about his answer when she asked if he liked her moments after the attack. He said, but there is a reason for that. I thought that I would die if I got stabbed anymore, and I wanted to call an ambulance. I knew she liked me, so I thought it would stop if I said that. And here's the part that kind of gets me, and I'm also very confused about it, and I don't think I would agree with it 100%, but that's just my personal opinion. Despite his trauma, Luna chose not to show any kind of ill will for Yuka. He said that he does not hold a grudge, and that there was a reason for her to stab him. It was also thanks to her that he was able to achieve the sales that he did in less than a year since becoming a host. When the interviewer from Shukin Post politely asked to see his healed wound, Luna agreed, but requested that no pictures would be taken. After the agreement, he then rolled up his shirt to show a scar, spreading from the middle of his chest down to his belly button. And so, Yuka Takauka has been charged with the attempted murder of Luna and is currently in custody, awaiting her court date, even though there hasn't been really a new update since late last year. I suppose we'll have to wait and see if new developments surface regarding the case. It's mind-boggling how Japan is recognized as one of the safest countries on the planet, yet when there's an off chance something violent happens, it's genuinely horrible on all accounts. What a damn shame, but it also goes to show that criminals can come on all corners, as well as the mentally disturbed. Despite them appearing beautiful, evil does not have a specific look. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, with certain individuals, it is best to treat them as a rose, because it takes a very long time to see if and what kind of thorns are going to be pricking your hands as you hold on to it. Be very careful with whoever it is that you do date, as well as who you let into your home, as well as whoever's home that you go into. Regardless of gender, there are some very sick-ass individuals out there who will take advantage of you and betray your trust if you do not do your research onto them as well as staying gullible. Otherwise, it may put you in a similar situation like Luna. Thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a good morning, a good afternoon, and I hope you all have yourselves a good night.